the important people sit over here. You see those fancy chairs and they're always up a little bit higher. Well, they wouldn't be there exactly. if it wasn't for the important exactly. people. Exactly. Correct. Remember, we went from law enforcement back in the day that was very little education and it was all about breaking doors and breaking heads. So now we're customer service, yeah. really, yeah. when you look at it. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for me to be on top of you. A, it stresses you out. As the chief said in his speech today, a lot of people suffer from mental health and probably confining your space is probably not the best option. See what the person needs, see how we could address it. When we were at the library, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have the same experience we had at the Danbury Public Library. Excuse me. We're always on camera and you took a job in public service. Um, so we appreciate you for that, and um, but that comes with transparency and accountability. Too. Absolutely, everything we do, right, we're accountable to the public. Keeps us on our toes. Yeah. I use the video of you in the Homeland Security Building, where the officer brings you the uh, policy. Yeah. It says, "I brought this just for you," and he's putting his gloves on. Read it. Read it. Sure. I brought it in here especially for you, so you could see. Oh, okay. A memo on First Amendment auditors. Is that who I am? You're showing characteristic traits that it's, that's what you are. Oh, you're, and you're showing characteristic traits that you're a tyrant. I'm going to throw you out. You're I'm not going you to touch me, that's I'm for sure. You know I have a right to film government employees in the course of their duty and the DHS memo. There's no need for you to put those on. There's no need. <laughs> She special ultimately agent. told them, calm down. Yeah, she was a special agent with the FBI. Right? I don't know whether he didn't understand it or whether he didn't bother to read it, whatever the case may be. Those a mainstream media, a lot of time, they, they will be adversarial, get in people's faces, and they will put the microphone in someone's face and start asking the mayor tough questions and follow the mayor around. And I feel like they're giving way more leeway when it comes to um, asking questions and, and gathering their content than a citizen would just because they have a, a they come from a, 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 com a private company like CNN, so they, they can be aggressive in their news gathering. First of all, I can get everything, because if you're too close, I can't capture it. And that's the whole point. That's why my camera was never in anybody's face because that would defeat the purpose of recording. So we started that back in COVID. And like a lot of things in the public sector, once they start, it's very hard to stop. Yes, I've noticed. Uh, so People ask me how I remain calm in these kinds of situations. And it's about controlling your emotions. And I think that's for any job, any scenario, relationship, be in control of your own emotions. Don't ever allow anyone to control your emotions because then they're controlling you and then you don't want anybody to have power over you. So like I said, this is publicly accessible to a certain extent. Um, you would get certain services over here in this area. Um, but if yeah. you come and look, this is about it. Um, everything else would be restricted yeah. because we want the entrance from the front of the building. Um, but the public does not come in here. Yeah. They, this is as far as they go. And then the public would come over here. So this is our, our municipal chambers, uh, our chambers. Uh, people get married here. A couple of my promotions have been here. Uh, hopefully so, more to come in the future. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> That's where the council sits, mayor in the middle. The commissioners across. We have all our public meetings here. People get married here. People that have an issue with whatever in the township, they speak there. Uh, you're allowed to record the township meetings. We don't. We don't. We've never. You. You could see numerous uh, meetings have been recorded. Like I said, our promotions. What we don't allow is any access beyond this. Yeah. All right. So the public can do whatever they want here. Record whatever. Uh, they get their time to speak. Uh, sometimes we have the township administrator, township attorney, the finance guys. Depending on the meeting that's being held here, they sit up there and the public is free to... I would say the, the important people sit over here. Correct. Sometimes, because uh, you, sometimes you forget that, you know, you see those fancy chairs and they're always up a little bit higher and you think like the important people sit there, but these are the important people that sit here. Well, they wouldn't be there exactly. if it wasn't for the important exactly. people. Exactly. Correct. And... Uh, the mayor, is, is his name is Nicholas Sacco. He's been something like more than 30 years. Wow. So I think he understands yeah. the concept. Yes. So generally, most of the public will enter through here, unless you're seeking those special services on the right, like I explained. So. Hey, how are you? So this is the mayor's office and the mayor's secretary. 
Greta, this is Sean Paul. Hi, Hi Greta, nice to meet you. Basically, some of the public may do business here, so they would, they would obviously speak with her. But beyond that, these areas are restricted. When there's no business, then they're properly marked. If you Perfect. see over there, they're properly marked. See? So, so it's very clear that this is where the public would deal with her, and they yeah. wouldn't go further. Any questions? No. no. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. This is the lady we met outside, Claudia. Is there always a uh, law enforcement officer here? Safety there is here? for safety issues. Yeah. He will not restrict anybody's access, but it's more for presence, or if there's any issue, he can respond quickly. Yeah, I was just wondering if uh, he's there all that's the time. That's uh, Manuel Suarez. This is Sean Paul Reyes, How Long you, Island sir? Audit. He's nice familiar you. with your page. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate this. He support. watches a lot of your videos. Uh, I appreciate it. Appreciate the support. Yeah, so they're told the way they're trained is they will not uh, obstruct you in any way, whether you have a camera or not. They, he's simply here uh, uh, to be courteous and direct you to the proper office where you might go. But they're not going to follow you around in anything. They've been specifically told, like, if we get an auditor or whatever, uh, let him be about his business. If he needs any help from you, he'll ask you, but there's no need to ask him why he's here or anything else because you wouldn't ask anybody else that exactly. if they didn't have a camera. Um, we don't have the issues we have with those two doors, obviously, because here the people are greeted at the glass. Exactly. Um, so township we have the clerk. tax collector, township clerk. If you're lawfully in that area, you're free to record whatever you can see. So if, let's say, um, I don't know, let's say these windows back there, they didn't want you to see that, they would have to black that out and create the privacy. Yeah. Because you don't have an obligation to turn your camera. They have the obligation to create, to create the, privacy. the privacy. Castro, Sean Paul Reyes. Hi. Nice How to, are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Jan ah, Janet, smart. Is, <laughs> Janet is actually our first female township administrator and our first Latina township administrator. Making, so she holds moves. two That's historic right. uh, positions. Right. Uh, I'm just escorting Sean Paul around. And, uh, Captain Raposo has done an amazing job training our employees. I needed to give him some glory because he really did. He, you know, we've held some trainings um, and we're not done actually. We still have, you know, a few follow-up trainings, yeah. um, but he's done an amazing job for the township. And um, our mayor, you know, obviously it speaks volumes, right, to the fact that he's, he's just so diverse and he wants our town hall, our staff to represent the community. So he's just so pro Hispanics, pro everything. So, and, and this is the reason why. We're, we're glad you, you've come in and, you know, we're, I'm sure you've walked around town hall, you walked around the police department. So. Excellent. I hope, I hope you've had a positive experience. That's what we're looking for. Yep. I'm, I'm, very, very positive experience. I've Excellent. Been here. It's been yeah. great. Different Everybody's from great. some other township administrator. Definitely, right? yeah. I've, yeah. I've She's one of a kind. Yeah. No, we're I've, I've met we invite. A, we invite. We invite. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've met a few uh, city administrators and township administrators that haven't been the nicest to me and just because of the camera. Hi, how are you? I'm well, thank you. How can I help you? Um... What office is this? I'm the city administrator. You're the city administrator? I am. Hi. Are you um, recording me? I am recording you. I would ask that you not record me, please. Well, you're a public official, obviously. You're the city administrator. I'm not elected. That, I'm that wouldn't matter. Yes, it does. <laughs> Illinois, a growing consensus of courts has recognized a constitutional right to record government officials engaged in their duties in a public place. We have cameras everywhere That's here. Right. We're always on camera and you took a job in public service. Um, so we appreciate you for that. And um, but that comes with transparency and accountability. Too. Absolutely. Everything we do, right? We're accountable to the public. To yes, the community, so. exactly. We forget that sometimes, right? right? As human beings, but it's important to constantly be reminded, right? Absolutely. Always remember. It's humbling. Yeah. I can't wait to tour the rest of your, your town here. It's, it's going to be great. Excellent. Yeah, we're going to go downtown. Live library, downtown Rec. Yeah. We did police, we did town. Excellent. We're going to go downtown Rec and then probably the library okay. to show all okay. the Excellent. facilities sure. we Thank offer. Thank you for stopping by. It was nice meeting you. We look forward you know, to uh, continuing to have you visit our facilities. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps us, keeps us on our toes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Take care. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Care. It was nice meeting you. So, uh, the way we instructed the officers, uh, I said a little before, again, maintaining the same theme as headquarters and everywhere else. This is publicly accessible. 
if for whatever reason there's a conflict because someone is doing business here or there or wherever it may be, you're going to look to try to take that individual somewhere else and continue to let you do whatever it is you have to do. Exactly. We're not looking to confront you or ask you what you're doing because it's pretty obvious what you're doing. Yeah. You're doing a story on yeah. something. So back here is just basically what I showed you on the other end. And these are like the safety fire exits for the people over there. It's secured with a keypad. Clearly it's locked. Same thing. Township employees only and all that other stuff. This is the tax assessor's office. Uh, if you recall through some conversations, I told you I checked out our properties to see exactly what they were, whether they were municipal, state, federal, what they were. This is where I go and I do all that homework. So in the event that one day an auditor comes and there's a dispute of the property, knowledgeable of the property. I'll know exactly what the property is and what their rights are. This would not be restricted access. Uh, this would obviously be publicly accessible. Uh, this is the opposite of the chamber. Obviously, this would be restricted. We don't want people coming in and all this, anything. The purchasing department, so anything needs to be done from the public with regards to purchasing, whether we have contractors or whoever, they deal with the public here. That over there was the door to uh, their like fire exit door. Uh, community service, this is the back end of what we saw through the front. Okay. So uh, the mayor and the township, they offer a lot of programs. For whatever reason, you need uh, help with any like food or anything like that or, or residents and you need to be placed somewhere, they'll reach out with the hotels, the local hotels in the area and uh, we'll fund that. Okay. North Bergen is very big on rent control buildings. I don't know the exact standard, but there's a certain criteria with buildings and rent control and all that nature. So they'll address all that here and they'll help out if there's any issue between a tenant and landlord. We have an advocate attorney on call and all that other stuff. Perfect. For example, like oh, what we get is sometimes a hotel will rent their room out in this area uh, as an apartment and then they won't receive rent for a period of time, but then they'll want to enforce their commercial business mm. as a hotel, but they've made that a de facto temporary residence. Yeah. So now they got to get evicted through the courts. Exactly. The, the advocates here will help out with all that. Okay. And we have signage for the public. So I noticed what you do a lot of times is they'll dispute you and they'll say, well, this is not a publicly accessible area. And you'll say, yeah, but all these... Yeah, signs and everything <laughs> indicate that there's, the public is coming through here. There's a reason why they hung up so, here. Yeah. yeah, if you if you look through here, that was just the other side of what I told yeah. you. Yeah, gotcha. In my mind, it's less about the tour. I, I love the tour, but it's less about the actual tour. It's more about your giving the tour, Correct. right? It's more about showing that you actually gave me a tour than the tour itself. So that that's what the chief and I and everybody. We really are serious about if you see anything wrong, a critique or anything, we don't want to find out with an auditor later. We want to learn now yeah. to avoid all that litigation exactly. and everything else. Yeah. And uh, that's what I've been tasked with and that's what I've been working on. This is the building construction yeah. enforcement. Sure, for permits and Correct. things of that so nature. So what they do is they'll come to this window, they'll deal with all the personnel here, which you see is a lot. This is Hi, Sean Paul Reyes, Long Island Audit. She is, uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Deal with permits and um, construction yes. permits and building permits, things of that nature here? Yes. I can see you have a lot of uh, help. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. probably need it. <laughs> yeah, she's a long time here and very, very, 30 years. very, very busy section and she's great. I mean. Well, thank you for your service to your community. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> I enjoy it. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. This is the Department of Parks. So obviously, hello. This is Sean Paul Reyes. Hi, Island how are Order. you? So whenever, how are you, sir? Whenever you need something uh, regarding parks department or anything like that, that's all the recreation, the fields, all that. This is where you would deal. You would deal with one of the secretaries. And obviously, back there, there's no access. Perfect. All Take right, care. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. you too. Fire prevention would deal with you here. That's obviously a private office. Alan Pasquale, he is the police commissioner. 
So the Commissioner of Public Safety falls where in the hierarchy of the township here? So it's it's the mayor, obviously Mayor Nick Sackle, and then we have four commissioners, uh, with which each deal with a function of the township. So he would deal with the law enforcement, public safety aspect. Okay. I just took you to parks. Uh, the the commissioner that just got elected, he's Department of Public Works. Okay. And then downstairs is the finance. Gotcha. So he over so that the, this commissioner in particular oversees the uh, law enforcement. He division. is Chief Facilities Boss. Okay. He supervises him. Okay. It, elected overseas. official. Correct. Perfect. He's very uh, proactive. He supports all this training and everything else. It's very clearly outlined what the publicly accessible areas are. Yep. You can't get stuck in one section because you come <laughs> around. Yeah. And uh, the bathrooms are marked. The everything's marked. Perfect. While he's there for a present, he's actually watching what's going on. We could go this way. Yeah. He's, at, he's watching what's going on without the need to actually interfere with it. Okay. Yeah, I never have a problem with, you know, it's up to the, it's up to the town or the city if they want to have a law enforcement officer, security guard. I mean, I, that's not my issue. The issue is the, you know, the being prevented to do move in publicly accessible areas. and. Correct. So we started that back in COVID, and like a lot of things in the public sector, once they start, it's very hard to stop. Yes, I've noticed. Uh, so it went from a, well, they're checking and backtracing and doing all these things to, yeah. well, it would be good just in general because of the shootings across the country. Yeah. So now we staff it every day, Monday to Friday. So we just finished up our tour at the North Bergen Town Hall. We are here with Captain so. Every day is a learning experience for each and every one of us. I, I love to learn something new every single day. Um, I never consider myself as knowing everything. There's a lot I don't know. There's there always will be stuff I don't know, and uh, I just know how to be compassionate towards people. I know how to uh, handle, you know, control my emotions, and I'm gonna continue to do that throughout this great country. I use the video of you in the Homeland Security building where the officer brings you the uh, policy. Yeah. It says, I brought this just for you. And he's putting his gloves on. Read it. Read it. Sure. I brought it in here especially for you so you could see. Oh, okay. A memo on First Amendment auditors. Is that who I am? You're showing characteristic traits that it's, that's what you are. Oh, you're, and you're showing characteristic traits that you're a tyrant. I'm going to throw you up. You're not going you you to touch me, that's for sure. You know I have a right to film government employees in the course of their duty and the DHS memo. There's no need for you to put those on. There's no need. And then the, yeah. uh, the, the I don't know who she was, but she special ultimately agent. told them, calm down. Yeah, she was a special agent with the FBI. Right? It actually says in that poster that you're permitted to record. Yeah. So I don't know whether he didn't understand it or whether he didn't bother to read it, whatever the case may be, that's insignificant. What I'm getting at is people always say, well, that's for news purposes. Yeah. But when you think of it logically, where is there a news permit? You just need to conduct something that would be interesting to the people and that would be considered news. Exactly. Case law has already determined that the public wants to know how their public servants are behaving. So when you're conducting a story on how we're behaving, there's your news and there's your independent journalism. Exactly. I do post offices now and again. I, I try and stick to county buildings, uh, police departments, city halls, uh, government centers, things of that nature. So that way, because those are where, where the most of the power is, where most of the elected officials are, law enforcement officials. So. I like to be able to shine a light there and see how they would treat us when we exercise our rights. That video which we just referenced in particular, uh, he, he explained to you, yeah, I understand, but we have a collective bargaining agreement with the employees that uh, we don't allow outside people to film them. And while, yeah, maybe the collective bargaining agreement was agreed to, the hierarchy of law supersedes being the First Amendment. Exactly. And I don't think people ever put that into perspective I know I didn't prior to all this because we think oh yeah but this is what we agreed to so yeah that's the first amendment that's for channel 7 that's for NBC yeah. that's for all these news agencies who are you you know what I'm saying and uh, so now we even train on that the constitution state law statutory law administrative law ordinances yeah. stuff we 
I would guarantee you, if you go across the country, most officers don't even realize that. We're not, even if you want to say that we are trained on it, because again, I can't tell you what I was trained on in the academy, because again, I was so exhausted waking up at 3, 4 in the morning, doing physical training for a few hours, and then towards the end of the day, now you want me to absorb all this content, you know, in our basic training. Yeah, maybe it was covered, but after that, you really only see people doing uh, any type of research or studious work for a promotional exam. Exactly. And, and that's very, like, geared towards what we call the New Jersey Law Enforcement Handbook, the New Jersey Attorney General Guidelines, Title 2C, Title 39. That's really the basics of it. Yeah, the Constitution is in there, but you don't put into perspective exactly. all the other uh, amendments. Exactly. Really, there might be some Miranda law in there, but it's mostly all Fourth Amendment law. Yeah, yeah I mean, and, and it's not put its perspective either on, you know, you learn you have the freedom of, okay, it's, it's, you have the freedom of press, you have the freedom of religion, you have the freedom of speech, but how does that apply in everyday life? Is that, like you said before, it doesn't matter if you're NBC, Fox News, um, you know, any other mainstream media outlet out there, CNN, it shouldn't matter. You know, those a mainstream media, a lot of time, they they will be adversarial, the adversarial press. You know, that they, they will be adversarial and they'll get in people's faces and they will put the microphone in someone's face and start asking the mayor tough questions and follow the mayor around. And I feel like they're giving way more, uh, they're giving way more uh, leeway when it comes to. Um, asking questions and, and gathering their content than a citizen would, just because they have a, a, a they come from a, 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 com a private company like CNN or MSNBC, and so they they can be aggressive in their news gathering as well. So I, that that also needs to be mentioned here, and the fact that you know a lot of times people because the two major things that people say are uh, First Amendment auditors like to agitate people, and they're very abrasive and. Um, get in people's faces so I would consider watching some aggressive reporters mainstream reporters so you can see the difference and how they're not being thrown in jail because you would be like wow that's I just threw a reporter in jail right so you would ever think of doing something exactly like so, so but you would think to uh, put the guy in jail on the street that's carrying a camera it's so different and then another thing that a lot of people um, who are anti first amendment auditor say is uh, they're just trying to make money and let me be clear the detractors seem to forget that CNN makes millions and millions of dollars uh, reporting the news and so does MSNBC and so does Fox News and they have opinion journalists and who, ha who spin the news and you know it, it, it all those you know all those criticisms of First Amendment auditors really about the aggression and how they're just they're trying to make money they really hold no no weight to me because there are aggressive reporters, mainstream reporters out there that, you know, you, a police officer would never think to arrest them. Never. So, this is the optics of it. But again, a man with a camera, a female with a camera, it's a regular person. It's, they see it as different and they should really see it as the same. That's why I really don't, when I do my audits, I, I don't carry like a big camera with me or a professional camera. It's always just the cell phone that's right recording right here. And, you know, I want to come across as a citizen journalist, just a regular member of We the People. This is our little substation. So as the captain was saying earlier across here, this is all publicly accessible here. Um, that's the public works department and we're about to go take a look at the substations. How are you? How are you guys doing? This is our, our entrance. It's a, kind of like a mini substation. Uh, the chief, the mayor, the council, what they did was they provided an area where sometimes officers won't want to eat in public, either from a safety perspective or a privacy perspective. So they have the option to go to the kitchen up at 43rd Street where we were, or they can sit down here with a TV and everything else. Uh, depending upon what time it is, 2 o'clock will be our roll call. I'm going to let you see what a little roll call is like if we're still around. And this is our training room. The use of force policy changed about two years ago or so. Uh, it's no longer acceptable for me to be in a position where you could assault me. 
So we, that's what I said, we do actually practical application of use of force and everything of that nature here. We need to maybe put a barrier between us so that it will avoid, and I can see that punch because I'm not a kung fu master. Yeah. So we need to put objects in our way which will prevent you from getting smart. towards me and maybe allow us to de-escalate that situation. Exactly smart, because a lot of law enforcement officers that when they come up to me, they, they you know, I, I get told that I put my camera in someone's face. Really, I'm about here, and this is where they consider like the camera being put in their face, which is not really, in, when I think of in their face, I think like here, you wouldn't be able to see anything if my camera was truly like in your face. But what I, I notice is some law enforcement officers, they'll just, they'll come up to me like this, and I and I always like take a step back and I'm like, you know, Yeah, let's, I noticed let's, you did that when I was Yeah, let's let's create let's create some space here between us, you know what I'm saying? So that way first of all I can get everything because if you're too close I can't capture it. And that's the whole point. That's why my camera's never in anybody's face, because that would defeat the purpose of recording. I wouldn't be able to get everything. I would just get like your head or whatever. And I wanna see your hands, I wanna see everything, so that way again for transparency. You but just like your body camera, if you're too close to somebody, you're not gonna be able to record them, right? Correct. It's gonna, it's gonna. Let's find out, let's find out what in your face literally is. <laughs> it's out of focus, by the way. It's so close, it's out of focus. <laughs> See, that's in your face. <laughs> I know, we're not that's, in your face anymore. Don't, don't do that. Don't put your camera in someone's face, it's no, rude. It's very uncomfortable. Yeah. So, so the, the AG, if you look it up, the use of force of policy, it's very outlined and it, use of force is really a last resort. Again, because if you're doing all the recommendations, sometimes there's no option. Of course. You have to use force. But if you follow what the AG recommends and you train on it, because it's one thing for officers to read it, but they have to understand how to apply that. And I think the hardest thing in our society is learning something and then applying it. Yeah. So with regards to our positioning, objects, and everything of that nature, we try to teach them on all that. We try to teach them. Remember, we went from law enforcement back in the day that was very little education, and it was all about breaking doors and breaking heads. So now we're a customer service, yeah. really, yeah. when you look at it. Mm -hmm. Like you said, yeah. uh, we're professionals, and with regards to an interaction, the old way was really to, you know, we have no, uh, we're not obligated to retreat. But now, even though we don't have that obligation to retreat, we still don't want to escalate because it's if I'm this close, it's very easy for you to take a punch at me. Yeah. So, so who's responsible for that confrontation? Yeah. Probably the way the AG looks at it is probably the officer because we have to have tactical positioning. Exactly. There's no reason for me to be on top of you. A, it stresses you out. As the chief said in his speech today, a lot of people suffer from mental health. And probably confining your space is probably not the best option. So leave that space. Let the person express themselves. Yeah. Back in the day, it was like, wrap that job up in one minute. Nowadays, is we'll see what the person needs, see how we could address it. That could be a number of ways. Yeah. And that's all the examples we teach. And when things go bad, which sometimes they do, naturally, um, we use the body cam as a training to let people see their own perspective of how they were performing in a certain way. Exactly. You can't physically train for those kinds of scenarios. They just happen naturally uh, in the course of work. But you can visualize them and show them to people, to new recruits and people who haven't been put in that kind of situation because every situation is different. So obviously, the, you know, every person's different. They're going to have, like, like, like the chief said earlier, mental illness, uh, drug pro abuse problems. And they're going to react differently. And then if you, that's why body cameras are beautiful. They can show this is how this person acted in this scenario. This is how the officer acted. This is the benefits of the officer acting this way. So I applaud your department for really for taking that route to, to train as uh, in depth as you are. We go to the extent of exactly uh, piggybacking on what you said. We go to the extent of if there's a language barrier and that officer, let's say, doesn't speak Spanish. Communication can be very frustrating as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're not understanding what I'm saying, it can create frustration. So we try and, and substitute an officer who speaks that language, whether it's English, Spanish, or whatever language that might be. And we find that that works a lot too, because clear, there's clear communication. A lot of times, officers maybe don't give clear commands. So that's another point of emphasis with the officers. The commands have to be clear, because if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, 
the officer's perceiving that as you're not listening, but is your command really clear so you know what you should be doing exactly. in a potential use of force situation? Exactly. So that's this building, not much to it. Okay, perfect. So where are we gonna head over to now? I'm gonna take you to the Uptown Library since we're still up here. Hopefully we don't, when we, we're at the library, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have the same experience we had at the Danbury Public Library. Excuse me. They should analyze what exactly started, because it can be, and in one of my court cases, uh, for in Danbury, the judge even said, when I, he found me not guilty of creating a public disturbance, he says, was there a di public disturbance in City Hall? Yes, but Mr. Reyes didn't create that disturbance. He might have been part of it, yeah. but he didn't create it. So that's why I was found not guilty, but that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. Great way. So I don't know if you want to uh, speak quickly about you were, you were born in North Bergen? Yeah, I've been a long time resident now, 39 years at the wow. township of North Bergen. 39 years, that's a long time. Yeah, my mom uh, raised me as a single parent uh, in the downtown section of North Bergen, which we're going to see the downtown library later. Okay. And that's uh, kind of where I grew up. And uh, yeah, so, you know, um, like any single mother, it was probably a little difficult for her. Yeah. But, uh, Thankfully, I guess through her instruction and I guess just the way I was directed, uh, very big on education and learning and understanding why things happen, not just that it happened, but why it happened, what's the situation that created the incident or whatever occurred, which has led me to uh, constantly pursue an educational background. I have one master's, two bachelor's, and an associate. Wow, a lot of education. Yeah, and I'm still trying to decide uh, how I can go about maybe getting a doctorate degree. Okay. But we'll see, because obviously the job is time consuming, and yeah. as you already know by now, I'm one of the head instructors for the department. Yeah, a lot on your plate. Yeah, so, you know, case law is never ending. It's a day-to-day -day situation. What's the law today could probably be changed tomorrow. Yeah. So it requires a lot of upkeep, which obviously we don't get compensated for. Yeah. I noticed that, you know, you said that your chief was very educated as well. Correct. So the leadership of your department has a lot of uh, higher level education, which I think is important in order to, you know, fully understand the laws fully understand, you know, even human nature, just to be able to take like an educated uh, perspective towards what's, um, towards what you're encountering, you know? Uh, I, I think that's definitely an asset with regards to the department because we don't have the luxury of having a full-time lawyer go job to job with us. So it's incumbent upon, as you said, the leadership and so forth to see that we do our part to educate the officers because as you see across the country, I mean, you witness this personally, a lot of times the confrontation comes simply from not knowing what to do. Yeah. And, and certain people have this belief that if they speak louder than you, that that's all of a sudden going to convince you that they're the ruling authority or know exactly what they say is yeah. going to prevail. Yeah. Lack of education and ego you know, are the two worst enemies of a law enforcement officer, of anyone really. Auditors around the world, First Amendment auditors, and anyone is not welcome here in North Bergen. Captain was just telling me that's why we're, re re we're going to all these um, hot spots, if you will, for that people who normally conduct First Amendment audits. And obviously, we've chosen you because we think you deliver a decent work product. You're respectful, you're cordial, you never try to escalate. And you're always just trying to accomplish your one mission of education. Exactly. So that's why we chose to work with you. And I appreciate that. And I, I really do appreciate you guys reaching out. Hello. Hello. Is Sai here? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? This is Sean. Hi, Sean. I'm Hi. So as I stated to you earlier, we're just trying to show that cameras are allowed. We just request that there's no disturbance. Yeah. 
Um, we're not going to criticize you. As you see, everybody's very cordial. We're not going to criticize you because you may have a camera in your hand. But what we don't want is a disturbance yeah. of the quiet and, and, and atmosphere. That, and, and that I can get behind. I'm sure you know that from watching my videos. I, I'm not for breaking the law with a camera. Not for I don't believe cameras give you any additional rights than any other citizen. I just don't think that you should lose any rights just because you're holding one. Absolutely. Is Sa here or she's not here? She's on vacation. Oh, all right. Yes. No, just, just introducing you to uh, Sean here. He's a First Amendment auditor. He does a lot of uh, constitutional work and activism across the country. And uh, we're just taking him around to all the different uh, township buildings and things of that nature and showing him that in the township of Mulberry and we're very welcoming. And that's it. Sure. If you need anything, let me know. Okay, okay. thank I'll you so much. All right, thank you so much. All right, thank you. So, again, there's not going to be uh, really much to it. Yeah. But you got the upper library here. People can use computer services here. Yeah. And then we have downstairs, and that's really all there is to, to Perfect. the library. Yeah, perfect. And as you see, you know, Obviously, uh, she, she had no idea that you were coming. Yeah, <laughs> no idea. Uh, yeah, she was like, okay, <laughs> if you need anything, let me know. Yeah. So that's what, again, that's really what we're trying to hit. Like, you may need assistance. Yes. And if you do, come to us. We're not going to follow you around the building like a security guard. Yeah. When, um, and again, I really, honestly, you know, I think that's silly. But again, I, I, I don't even really have an issue. I don't even take issue. I just think there's better, you know, uses of resources that that can be done for, you know, there's you don't follow anybody else around. So why would you follow me around? But it's really when you're interfering with trying to remove um, a citizen from a public building just because they have a camera. That's where I really take issue with it. And unconstitutional signage saying that you couldn't record when there's no statute associated to it. That that's really where I take issue. So we've tried to make it easy yeah. with that. And with the educated and inform, we think we have a decent product, but we're still working on it. Yep. Every day's progress, right? If it wasn't for Rodney King, and if it wasn't for these historical events that happened throughout our history, we'd probably still be 20 years ago yeah. in the dark ages of law enforcement. Yeah. Progress. Every day is progress. I see it all the time. So From officers like yourself and others across the country that are really taking the initiative. So, how many cars we got? Uh, we're gonna have six cars in the traffic room. Seven altogether. Oh. So yeah. So as you see, roll call is getting started. The normal procedure, every change of shift, and they'll be coming in as we go, and then I'll introduce you once everybody's here. Okay. Is okay. the sergeant will give assignments uh, from what sector the individual officer is, and then anything pertinent, whether there's a restraining order, arrest warrants, uh, any crime locations, things we should focus on. Uh, whatever information needs to be conveyed to the officers for this shift, that's what the sergeant will do, and then he'll take an accountability of where everybody is, and that'll be all transmitted up to headquarters. Um, so this is Sergeant Jason Solon. You and met him earlier. Oh, okay. You met him earlier. So Officer Jennifer Fernandez, Officer Melissa Velasquez, Officer Ishmael Gonzalez, Officer Nazario, Officer Alex Sanchez, Officer Jonathan Sinchi, Officer Indira Cabrera. I see all of you. you uh, their uh, names. I know. You guys are great with the names and badge numbers here. You're very quick. <laughs> this is Long Island <laughs> Audit, in case you don't know who he is. This is uh, Sean Paul Reyes. Uh, he runs the channel. He's a First Amendment auditor. He's been uh, touring the, the lands of North Bergen with us throughout the day since earlier in the morning. And uh, he just wanted to come say hi to everybody. I don't know if he wants to say anything. And uh, just basically meet you guys in person because sometimes the perception you have of what's on YouTube is not always the reality. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, a good uh, little segue. You know, I'm sure most of you know who First Amendment auditors are or have seen videos or clips somewhere on social media about First Amendment auditors. And 
um, might not have the best uh, impre- might not have given you the best impression when it comes to law enforcement and you all are out there on the front lines patrolling I spoke to I was in the command meeting earlier and um, I was able to address your leadership and that's how I know that you guys are going to be successful here because your leadership um, from the chief to the captain to the deputy chief your to the sergeants your, your leadership here is uh, very very good and so I have complete faith that you guys will you know continue to grow I would just my suggestion would be is just if, if I can leave you with anything it would be to not automatically jump to conclusions if you see somebody with a camera in their hand um, they might be trying to agitate you or they might just be perf- um which again agitating you is not against the law uh, you know you took a job uh, that um, you need to have thick skin in order to uh, it's like that bulletproof vest is thick. You need thick skin in order to take what's you know coming to you sometimes. Uh, whether I don't treat people that way, that's not how I conduct myself. But some other people would act that way, and that's their right, right? Therefore, we have freedom of speech in this country. So I would just ask that you treat people um, with respect that, that they deserve, and don't automatically assume just because someone's coming up on your traffic stop or a call that you're at with a camera that they're automatically going to cause you an issue. Um, because probably they're not going to. The same way I don't think any of you are gonna pound on me and lock me up right now, because it's happened to me across this country already, so I'm starting to get a little nervous around all these law enforcement officers today. Um, but no, I treat every law enforcement officer I come into with the, with the utmost respect. Um, and don't say right here, just, just identify yourself, because I feel like that's kind of disrespectful in a way too. And I always identify myself, I always say my name is Sean and uh, I'm an independent journalist. But I appreciate your service to your community. I'm sure the people of North Bergen appreciate it and you're in good hands with the leadership here. So that's all I want to say. Can you reiterate something that you said in training earlier? Sure. Can you let them know about how you'd react if someone asked for your ID? Like what what your issue is with like giving an ID? So yeah. Like what you oh yeah, because you're probably asking for a lot of IDs. Exactly. So a lot. Just explain that to them. Yeah. So uh, ID is, is you know, know what I've noticed traveling across the country in, in every law enforcement um, department or any encounter I come to hey let me see your ID let me see your ID it's always like the first thing you know you go to unless you're like you know writing someone a a ticket for anything or you know I don't see why you would ever need ID to be honest but you know just it's just why why would I give you my ID it has my personal address on it It has you know that's my personal property I have no you know in New Jersey or even anywhere you need reasonable articulable suspicion of a crime in order to not just suspicious because somebody suspicious doesn't mean that you can automatically demand ID from them. It's just very important that I think that escalates the situation when you're trying to get property from somebody. Not a lot of people aren't uh, aren't going to show up with warrants. You know, a lot of heinous crimes happen and people don't have warrants or any criminal history whatsoever. That's not an indicator of you know what this person's intentions are. You're not going to go look at their ID and say, well, they're here. F- they're here for bad purposes. It's just going to tell you their name and their address, and you have no right to. To demand that from anyone, so uh, I think it's very important. I wouldn't give my ID only because I don't want no one knowing my address. Anyone just knowing my address, who I am. It's again, my name's Sean. Believe me or not, that's my name, and you know I'm not gonna lie to you. And I don't wouldn't ask for your ID. I don't want to. Would you? If I said, hey, can I see your ID right now? <laughs> would you give it to me? Probably not, right? Because why not? It's just an ID. Because you don't want me seeing your ID, right? You don't want me seeing your your. It's the same thing. Uh, you know, citizens have the same rights. You, we all have we well, we all have rights in this country, and unless you have uh, reasonable suspicion that somebody's committing a crime, you know, you have no authority to demand ID from anyone. So, again, I don't, I don't, see, I don't, I just don't see the purpose in how it helps you out. It just escalates the situation. Just de-escalation, like I said in the command meeting earlier. I think that works wonders in in every scenario. Just de-escalate, and everything will work out. And if it needs to be escalated. It needs to be escalated. There's some people who are going to be difficult in this world, and that's the decisions that they're making. Like, again, what he said, short of driving, obviously 393-29, you have an obligation to give your driver's license when you're operating a motor vehicle. Short of a motor vehicle, I mean, a, a reasonable suspicion is the uh, level of, of suspicion across the country for most parts for states that have a stop and identify statute. As you know, New Jersey doesn't have one. So really short of an arrest or some kind of motor vehicle summons, you're not going to be able to require anybody to give ID. So what the sergeant and what Sean are getting at is a simple of, hey, what's your name, will probably go a lot further than give me your ID. Let me see your ID. 
just walk up to somebody and say, hey, let me see your ID, because it happens all, it's happened to me, you know, hundreds of times, just, hey, let me see your ID, hi, and then I just immediately say, hey, how are you, nice to meet you, um, I completely ignore the request, and I just, but that's me, again, I, I like to de-escalate situations, it, you can run across people who are going to be like, you know, shut the F up, and then you, another thing I want to say, one more thing, is that I, people ask me how I remain calm in these kinds of situations, and it's about controlling your emotions. And I think that's for any job, any scenario, relationship, be in control of your own emotions. Don't ever allow anyone to control your emotions because then they're controlling you, and then you don't want anybody to have power over you. So. Right now, when we turn to the right, you're going to see a surgeon sergeant called Yusuf. He's going to tell you how he saved my life multiple times and all these other things. Six and times. He's, he's well aware of your what followers. Is, who's so that's why he still has his shades and everything. He's posing. Because <laughs> <laughs> he wants to get a second clip. <laughs> I'm going to so start my own podcast Sh one of these there days. There you go. What's up, man? How nice are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, Pleasure. podcast. I, I think I'm about starting a podcast, too. I want to bring people on. and I would love to have you on the channel in, in a, sure. more of a, like a panel capacity to yeah, where we can sure. have... Uh, I'm all about uh, bridging the gap between law enforcement and the public. Um, again, might not seem that way in some of my videos just because it's, you know, I am human and I, I do like to call out and expose uh, uh, tyrant police officers, as I would call them, and people who don't honor the oath that they took. You guys took an oath, right? You guys, that should, you should treat that very seriously to uphold people's rights, and especially here in your community. So I have no doubt. If you if you, you that you will do that, and I have no doubt that if you don't, you're not going to be here for a while. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I but I, I have no doubt that your leadership will keep giving you the tools to do the right thing. So, thank you guys. Thank Appreciate you. you guys having me listening. Thank you, Sergeant. Oh, thank thank you. you. Have a good one. Thanks. Thank you. Sergeant. Yeah, nice to you. You. Hey, sir. This is Detective Frank Manna. He's been here like 35 years. Wow, long time. We should probably <laughs> keep walking. <laughs> As you hear, we didn't really have anything. Yeah. Uh, I've been I've been playing it uh, so you can hear what's going on. It's been quiet so far. All right, guys. So we just got to the North Bergen Municipal Court, where Captain. Uh, Raposo is going to take us on a little tour, like we've been taking tours on public buildings all day. Come on. So uh, this is our municipal court. Um, right here is just an elevator for handicap access to get down because we have a stairway over here. Um, we always man it with a court officer. That's Charlie Anakas. Sean, hey, Sean, Sean meet Sean. <laughs> uh, yeah. I like your name. Nice to meet you. <laughs> So, so we consider this to all be publicly accessible, yeah. um, which we would never interfere with you. Uh, the only thing we wouldn't let you do here is let you film inside the courtroom. Okay. Okay? Yeah. But anything in this area, we wouldn't have any objections or anything like that, all because the public's accessing it, so there's really no problem. Yeah. We have that case going on. Oh, okay. So we want to let you record in here yeah. where the case is going exactly. on for fairness for the No, no, defendant. of course, for the defendant. Correct. But in because here... The, because let's... Uh, so the courts have already ruled that you can't... It's, it's, it's too... The reason why they don't allow cameras in the courtroom is, is to protect the defendant's rights to a fair, fair trial. Every time I've requested my court proceedings to be recorded, like my trial that we've all watched, um, the judge has allowed my proceedings to be recorded, so there is transparency somewhat in the courtroom, depending on the courthouse, but obviously in the publicly accessible areas. Whenever there is a situation where you're in a lawful vantage point, we create that privacy, because you're under no obligation exactly. to stop recording. Yeah, you said that. So like he said, if the door yeah. happened to be open, yeah. we would create the privacy by closing, closing it. the door. If it's a glass Simple window, fix. we would tint it out or whatever. Instead of saying, you know, hey, instead of going on and saying, hey, turn your camera away, Correct. it's very simple to just close yeah. the door and we move forward Correct. and move on. So this is actually manned by uh, North Bergen Police as well. Correct. I know some, some places have their own court security. Yeah, so everyone comes through the security, get scanned, all that. And then you sit over here while you wait for your case. Uh, and beyond that door, you would speak to the municipal prosecutor, which obviously there's no recording down there because he's dealing with you on your case. Yeah. So uh, you wouldn't be recording someone else speaking with the prosecutor yeah. on their case details. But in here, in here, no problem. 
publicly accessible. Perfect. And then people come up here, depending upon their court case or whatever, and they come up to the uh, court clerks over here, they make payment, we got some bathrooms here, and that's it. Obviously the door is closed, so no authorized access. And the elevator. Hi, how are you? And the ele elevator is how I told you for handicapped yeah, public, individuals yeah. to be able to access. public accommodations. Yeah, public accommodations, yeah. Correct. ADA. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. It was nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, How'd it go? It went really well. It was great. I hope you enjoyed your uh, your time here. Um, and uh, I hope George took care of you too. George is amazing, you, you know that yeah. better than I do. Um, I just wanted to thank you, Chief, for inviting me here to your department, for being so transparent about what's going on here. It was a pleasure meeting you. It really was. It's, uh, and uh, and you need anything, you know where to find us, all right? This department has just been great. The Chief has been great. It's not possible without you know the captain here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much. All right, guys, as always, stay safe. God bless. I'll see you in the next video. Long Island on it. Peace. <laughs>